Now, it was one of the biggest miscarriages of justice in UK history. Slowly, some victims of the post office IT scandal are having their convictions overturned. The first sub-postmaster to have their conviction quashed in England since that ITV drama shed a new light on the issue is Cathy Crane, who started running the post office in Eastbourne in the year 2000. So she first started noticing shortfalls in the system back in 2008 and asked the post office to investigate the issue. In 2010, Cathy was ordered to repay more than £18,000 and given a 12-month community order when she was convicted of fraud. Now, 14 years later, Cathy's name has finally been cleared. Still <laughs> makes me emotional. <laughs> Cathy, well, good morning. Cathy's good here morning. with us now. Good morning, with daughter Katie as Hi. well. Morning to you. Morning. You say it still makes you emotional. Oh, yes. Very much. It's so recent, isn't it? Mm. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll ask about what happened at the, at the start when you took over at the post mm. office as sub-postmaster, but just what have the last few weeks been like for you? Oh, a roller coaster. Um, I wasn't originally going to go to the courts. I thought, no. And then I lay in bed the night before and thought, you've got to see this through till the end. So myself and my other daughter went up. And I'm so glad I did go. So glad I did go. Should we go back to the start? Mm -hmm. So it was your husband who was the postmaster, yes. the sub postmaster, uh, Robert. And Robert became ill. He had a um, heart attack. I yes, think. and many other things. Okay, so you decided to take over the business. You had experience. You'd worked in yeah. business before. Yes. Very confident with money mm -hmm. um, and accounts mm -hmm. and running a business. So everything seemed okay. Yes, everything was fine. All well. going along quite nicely. Thoroughly enjoying it. Um, lovely people coming in the shop. And then one day I thought there's something not right. At the end of the day, you look at the money. I thought. I haven't done anything wrong. Oh, it'll sort itself out. What kind of amounts <laughs> are you talking about at the beginning when you noticed disparity? It started off with three and a half thousand. And I thought, no, that's an odd amount. And then the following week you balanced again and it had gone up like to eight thousand. And I'm thinking, well, where's it gone? And you sort of go over and over, you think, is it me? Am I doing something wrong, looking at it wrong? We've spoken to sub-postmasters before and spoken to them and, and about the effect it has in the workplace. Oh, yeah. And how staff, other staff, think about it. Some have said, you know, we started thinking maybe it was some of our staff who we trusted yeah. implicitly. You do. It does go through your head. But one of the ladies who worked with me had been there, I think, since the post office opened. <laughs> um, and so I never doubted her at all. So, as you saw these numbers add up, mm. What, what was the kind of process? Who did you get in touch with to say, this isn't right? Well, I rang her eyes in the help desk. Right. To get someone to come down. Nobody came. Ring again, nobody came. Then one morning they did turn up. At the post office? Yeah. They knock on the window and in they came. And I said, oh, William, you know, there, there's a large amount missing. We'll deal with that. And they go through the figures again and again. And you know what the outcome's going to be. And that was it. And then they just closed the post office. Uh, Katie, so just give us, so people understand, mm -hmm. what age were you when th these events started to unfold? So I would have just started secondary school, so I would have been 11 or 12 years old. And you're, you're realising, I don't know how open you were about what was going on, how much did you know about what was happening at the time? So mum and dad had always tried, like you do with your children, to protect us. But you just know, you know, we were, we were a close family, and you just know when something's not quite right. And Why when did your mum... you know? Just how mum was. I knew that, you know, the post office had closed. Mum was obviously very withdrawn. She was very, you know, upset, very stressed about obviously what was going on. And you just pick up on, you know, vibes of your family. Um, my dad obviously was also quite emotional about it at the time. Um, so you just pick up on a feeling. Katie, you, your mum mm -hmm. was convicted. Mm -hmm. And what, I mean, we've heard quite a bit from from the, the postmasters themselves and those who are running the post office. For you, as mm -hmm. a family member, yeah. what was that like? I mean, it was awful. Um, there was never a doubt in my mind that my mum was completely innocent and had done nothing wrong. But at that moment, you feel helpless because, you know, a court have said she's guilty, she's been convicted. You feel like there's nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. And it was traumatic, you know. I was thinking, oh, my gosh, what if my mum goes to jail? What am I going to do? What's my mm -hmm. dad going to do? Um, you know, you worry about 
what your like friends might think, what my teachers might think. What were you people saying to you? What was so the community I like? I hadn't really spoken to many people about it, to be honest, because I felt like it was my mum's business to tell. Mm. And, you know, I've got amazing, you know, supportive family and friends, but it, I just didn't feel like I could really tell them no. about it. And it all just seemed to be a bit surreal. Like, you almost just think, this isn't happening. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and, oh, don't worry, we found the money, everything's fine, yeah. <laughs> stand down. That's but... what you did keep thinking. Oh, it's all all right. It's, yeah. There it is, you know. Yeah, it's just a mistake that will come out. And uh, yeah. all this time, Robert was still alive. Yeah. But he was seeing all this unfold as well. Yeah. What was he saying to yeah. you? Well, he um, noticed an article in the magazine um, to do with Horizon. So he then went online to try and start the process. But then he became very, very ill, mm. didn't he? So that was put aside because we had to care for him. So unfortunately, he passed away not knowing the outcome, which was very sad. Can I ask you, um, Cathy, about the effect on you um, in terms of the emotions? And were you, you were talking a moment ago about community mm. and whether people were judging you because because of the conviction, now quashed. I mean, it's so important to say that over and over again, and we saw your emotions <laughs> yeah. right at the beginning. Yeah. It is quashed, you know, it, it was wrong. Yes. But there was a period of time when, what was it like engaging with people? What, how were people with you? I was very uncomfortable, and I felt people were judging me. And unfortunately, I thought everybody was judging me, and not everybody was. But I, I kept, became very withdrawn. I uh, didn't really go out a lot. I was just quite happy in the house. I felt safe, you know, in the home. But people would smile, but people that would normally stop and talk kept walking. You know, they obviously didn't want to talk to me. I can't imagine what that would have felt like. It's horrible. Horrible. Mm. It's not nice at all, because I'm quite a quiet person anyway, I think. <laughs> I think I am. And it just made everything worse. You um... were humiliated, really. Yeah, and it's almost like you've got this black mark on you, haven't you? Mm, that's um, right. But even though you know you're innocent and you haven't mm. done anything because wrong. Because all those years, as I've said, I suffered in silence and never told a soul. And overnight, everybody <laughs> knew. <laughs> so... Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. I was just going to ask, as, as you look forward now, mm. and a lot of people in your situation have been asked that question about how, how, what will make... Nothing's going to change what happened in the past no. and, and the emotional damage and, the, and all of that. But how, what can be done to make up in any way for what's happened? And I know there's financial mm. recompense, which is being so negotiated in some yeah. situations. Uh, overall, think, what is it? I think someone's got to be held to account for this because the pain they put myself and many others through is cruel. Very cool. The post office has said we're deeply sorry for past wrongs, are doing all we can to put these right. And while I read this out, it's worth seeing your reaction <laughs> to this statement. <laughs> we're deeply sorry for past wrongs. We're doing all we can to put these right, including extensive work to support overturning wrongful for convictions. Mm -hmm. Um, we continue to work with the government to support efforts to speed up the exoneration of people with wrongful convictions and ensure compensation is paid. Mm. What does that mean? I mean, Katie, I, I, <laughs> um, I think you're politely laughing. Yeah. Don't start her off. <laughs> no, we'll start her off. It's fine. It's your I story. Think, you know, 14 years too late. Can't, like, you know, my mum's lived with this for 14 years. Mm. She, you know, she's spoken about how she felt. You know, real fear, standing up in court and being told she was guilty of a crime she'd never committed. Mm. You know, dealing with a very poorly husband, the loss of, you know, my, my dad, and then potentially my mum going to prison, mm. you know. And I just think, yeah, 14 years too late. My mum was asking for help and wasn't getting any, mm. you know. And I just think it's just insane to me that it took the ITV drama yeah. to bring it to the forefront of everyone's, you know, attention. Because, because there were investigations, there were journalists yeah. working on this, but it wasn't being recognised. Yeah, and it? I'm over the moon that Mum has now got the conviction overturned. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, I think, you know, she deserves the compensation. And uh, as what she said, somebody does need to be held to account. And, you know, feel, feel the fear that my mum felt. And the shame the that my mum felt. The fear that you may go to prison is mm. unbearable. Yeah, especially mm. when you know you've done nothing wrong. Mm. But, uh, I, we, we... but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Say it out loud. I yeah. mean, that's the thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, I'm very pleased you came in and told us your Thank story. You. And, and we've heard stories from others, and every time, you know, we, the audience, hear these stories, it, it, you know, the, the unfairness of what happened is mm. manifest. Thank you very much. That's a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Thank you for Good luck with goodbye. the future Thank you. as well. Thank you. Can I just say, where I work, it's in a care home. The day after I went in and all the little old ladies were cheering. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it was, it was so emotional. And we had the an day amazing after barrister. The, the yeah, the the was was yeah, I went into work. <laughs> and they all knew. Yeah, because they, <laughs> yeah. they saw me up, saw you on the telly. <laughs> Well, they'll oh, be watching this morning. Because, yeah. as, I, oh, they are. because as I said, <laughs> I never told anyone. Well, I suppose that... My, I, that was... In amongst was, many bad things. Oh, that was lovely. Like that. I told you, didn't yeah. I? Oh, they were cheering lovely. and waving their hands in the air. Do you think you're watching now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Give them a wave. Okay, yeah. See that one there? <laughs> this one, that's, camera that's four. Camera four. <laughs> Hello, everybody at work. <laughs> 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 thank um, you. Kathy, Katie, Crane, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Thank, thank you for having us. Thank you for... Hearing our story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see.